So I went to see Doom 2 or Dune 2. I don't know why I said Doom. And it was surprisingly a very well done movie. There's been a lot of glowing reviews of this movie. Here's what's interesting. And this is when you know a movie is good. When even Nerd Roddick has some good things to say about this movie. I believe Nerd Roddick is an honest critic. I believe movies that he doesn't like, he offers legitimate criticism. It's not just uh, uh, internet rage bait. Even though some of his movie reviews, I don't agree wholeheartedly there's some movies i like that he didn't like but i trust his reviews i think they're honest i think like i said the critiques that he offers of certain movies are real legitimate critiques and you can analyze and break down the things that he says and come to the conclusion that yo okay this is valid this is this is this is not an invalid critique but dune 2 acting good cinematics good score was good pacing was good uh, storyline was good. I've never read the Dune books. I actually have book number two, an original printing, and I'm trying to find an original printing of uh, the first book, which I, I, I guess that that book is like uh, very expensive. Let's put it that way. I've, I've searched some different places and I'm like, wow, I'm not paying this for first printing. But if I ever come across a first printing, no matter what the condition, I'm going to buy it. I still haven't read that second book. I'm waiting to get my hands on a, on a first printing of the first book. Maybe it never happens. Maybe it does. Who knows? We'll see. Anyway, never read the book. So I don't have any frame of reference. Now, oftentimes uh, movies are almost never as good as the books they come from. Uh, one uh, in particular I can think of, I bring up all the time is Ready Player One. It was a good movie. But if you read the book, you definitely saw ah, there's some things about this that could have been better. Nonetheless, I, I went into Doom, Dune. I don't know. I keep saying Doom. I went into Dune not really knowing what to think, not knowing what to expect. I like the first the first one. A lot of people didn't like it. I've heard different uh, discussions about Timothy Chalamet, what people thought about his acting. I thought it was good. I know nothing about the kid. I've, I've not followed him. I've not followed his career. I know a lot of people like him. A lot of people dislike him. I went in blind. Uh, of course, there were act actors and actresses in the movie. We all know. But him being the, the lead, I, I went in blind, not knowing what to expect, not knowing what I was going to get. And I was pleased. I was pleased with what I saw. I, I think that Dune is... In, indicative in some way is that the word I'm looking for I I, uh, I know what I'm trying to say I think Dune exposes a problem in Hollywood so Dune has been widely accepted by many critics like across the board Th this I've almost never seen this happen as a matter of fact I'm gonna check and see what the what the critic and audience score is because the last time I checked, the critic and audience score was actually pretty good, which most modern movies, yeah. So um, looking right now, the critic score, the tomato meter, 93%, audience score, 95%. Typically, when you see consensus from critics and the audience, that's typically a review you can probably trust or a score you can trust. If you, if the critics say the movie's great and the audience says not so much audience is more than likely right. And vice versa. If the critics say terrible movie and the audience is like, not, nah, it's actually pretty good. The audience is more than likely right. So what does that lead us to believe? seems like audience is no better than critics. I, and I think the problem, and I, and I see this in the independent space, uh, in the media and on the internet as well. I think sometimes critics lose focus of what people enjoy. Like all of the little nuances of cinema that critics might notice, a regular person going to see a movie is probably not going to pay attention to, right? Like you'll hear certain critics and they'll be like, well, when you look at the lighting in this scene and the lighting in this scene and the way the score fits this, 
as to where most fans are going to go in and think, yo, I enjoyed watching that movie. And that's really all they're going to take away. Was the story good? Yes. Was the acting good? Yes. Did I feel like I had an enjoyable time? Yes. And that's going to be the metric of most fans. That's how I judge a movie. Even though I recognize, oh yeah, this is the visuals were dope. Acting was good. Pacing was good. I can recognize these things, but I watch movies as a fan, not a critic, because I am not a critic. I am not trained in cinema. I cannot tell you the ins and outs of movie making. So I don't necessarily uh, uh, take the road that critics take, even though I recognize their critiques. I don't have the expertise to critique in that way. That's not to say I don't notice these things, but I might enjoy a movie most critics won't enjoy. And this has been something that has happened often. And I've also not liked movies that are enjoyed by masses of people, cult classics that I just don't like. They're not my cup of tea. Again, I'm just a fan perspective, what I enjoy and what I don't enjoy. And I think this is one of those movies that had enough for the critics that the critics can enjoy the movie and also had enough for just regular cinematic moviegoers that they can view the movie and go, wow, this is an enjoyable experience. And it's rare nowadays that that happens. You, 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 you typically don't see that with movies because movies move in either one direction or another. Either it's a bunch of things that critics would love that audience wouldn't pay attention to, or it's fan service to the audience and screw the critics. Now, I prefer the latter because audiences and fans are what makes franchise. Speaking of which, Halo season two, episode five, that was not good. And the reason it was not good, the fall of reach in Halo is such a pivotal moment in the whole franchise when you open um when you when you get into uh halo combat evolved the first game that is that's on the heels of the fall of reach i think it's the pillar of autumn is leaving reach this is the heels of that happening this is a big deal this this is what started out the whole thing and they made it one episode one episode fall of reach done there is so much about this halo TV show that I think needs to be fixed. And I'll tell you, I think the only way to fix this, scrub the show, maybe make an animated series or scrub the show and make a three part movie. Because I'll tell you what you could do. You can do a whole movie just on a fall of reach. You could do a, an entire trilogy just on a fall of reach. But I would be comfortable if they took the fall of reach, the key points, made it a movie, then go to the first Halo ring, make that a movie, and then deal with maybe the flood in a third movie and leave it open-ended for more movies in the future. I would be completely comfortable with that, but the way this Halo series has gone, it has departed so much from the things that make Halo such a good franchise. And I think this has been the issue that most people have had with this series. I know I, I've, I've seen, uh, what is his name? Um, Pablo Shriver, I think is his name. Uh, the dude that plays Master Chief. Let me look it up because I always get this, this name mixed up. And I believe he said some things uh, about, you know, yeah, Pablo Shriver. Schreiber. I guess he said some things about him taking off the helmet, different storyline. I think people could get past that. And I've brought this up before. If the the if the show was accurate to the book, people would be able to get past the helmet being removed. Right. Like if the if you've played the games, if you remember the different places in the game where Master Chief pulled off his helmet, obviously you're playing him so you can't see his face. If they work those scenes right there in, but from another person's perspective, I think people would have been like, yo, I'll accept this. This this will work. I understand. We're not just seeing it from the Master Chief's perspective. We're not playing a first person shooter. But yeah, so much about Halo season two, episode five 
is the opposite of what I got from Dune. Now, maybe if I read the Dune books, then I would look at this Dune movie and go, yeah, I don't enjoy this. And and for that reason, now I can recognize this. I can recognize had I never played the Halo game and never read the Halo books, I would more than likely enjoy uh, Halo season one and two because I would have no frame of reference. But Halo is so big and so many of us are so steepled uh, into this franchise that, man, it's hard to watch. It really is.